Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, on behalf of Pat Fleming and the staff of AccuStats Video Productions, and on behalf of Ed Ladawi and the staff here at Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, welcome back to the 2015 AccuStats Make It Happen 10 Ball Invitational. Uh, we had six of the world's greatest players on hand for this four-day round robin. We're into day number four, and the records thus far are Jason Shaw is three and one, Shane Van Boning is three and one, Thorsten Holman and Earl Strickland and Kevin Ching are all tied at two games apiece, uh, two and two, and Darren Appleton is 0 and 4. Uh, so it's still uh, anybody's ball game to see who proceeds into tonight's finals. And at this time, we'd like to get our first round of play underway for uh, this day number four of the Make It Happen 10 Ball Invitational. Our first gentleman is a five time winner of the U.S. Open Nine Ball Championships from Greensboro, North Carolina. Please welcome back the mighty Earl, Earl Strickland. Thank you. And his opponent, former world straight pool champion, former world nine ball champion. He hails from Fulda, Germany. Please welcome back the hit man, Mr. Thorsten Holman. Thank you. <laughs> Gentlemen, you may lag for the first break. Official is Carswell Ransom. And we're going to send it to the booth. Danny DiLiberto and Billy N. Cardona. Take it away. Come on, make some noise for these guys. Thank you. Akistat's Video Productions presents from Sandcastle Billiards in Edison, New Jersey, the Make It Happen 10 Ball Invitational. Along with Danny DiLiberto, I'm Bill in Cardona. This is the final day, Danny, of the Make It Happen 10 Ball Invitational. We've seen some pretty good matches up to this we point. We just saw a pretty good lag right now. Earl throws the ball. And the way he's playing, you don't want to give him a head start. Well, his last match, he shot like a 970. 970. 970 plus, Five. I believe it was. 975. Yeah, which is the highest TPA in the tournament. Now, Scott Smith said that he has a record of, of uh, I believe, two wins, two wins and two losses. Yeah. And he put him in contention to win the tournament. It's possible. I don't think it's possible, unfortunately, for all you Earl supporters. I don't think it's possible that Earl can win this tournament. No, he, he didn't win enough games in his losses. So a tie will not help him. But his opponent, Holman, can definitely win. Yeah. He also has two wins and two there losses. There goes the ball on the side, so he's learned how to break. Well, he didn't learn how to play position on the one, though. And very quickly, Holman has two wins and two losses. In his two losses, he accumulated 18 games. That's a big plus because the tiebreaker is the play, if you're tied and none of our matches won, the first tiebreaker is in the number of in the games you lost, in the matches you lost, how many games did you win? Holman won 18 games in the two matches he lost far more games than any other player with two losses. So if he goes on to win this match, he most likely will be one of the two finals. Players on an but if he ends up losing this match, he can pack his bags. But if Van Bonin and Shaw win, they're both going to be at four and one, so it all doesn't matter. That's true. There's only two players that can possibly end up with four wins. One is Van Boning, the other is Shaw. So if they both win, those are the two guys we'll watch play in the final. He pushed out and he hooked Earl. He hooked himself. I like that push because this is a type of a shot where if you can masse around the seven, the one ball is positioned about a quarter of an inch off the side rail in a very makeable position, two ball cross table, he should end up with a shot on the two if he pockets the one. Well, he sold out. I spoke to Earl. Before Earl the is feeling real good. You know, he can't win the tournament, but, you know, winning now three in a row, he, mentally it would help him. You know, because he, he told me he's back. 
I spoke to Earl shortly before this match began, and I questioned him. I said, Earl, why do you have all that stuff on your arm? He says, it was a weight, Billy. He says, it helps me keep my arm down. He says, this weight, and he pointed to other manufacturers, multiple weights that he has on his arm. And he said, oh, this weight here, when I'm shooting on the rail, my arm stays down. He says, if, if yeah, I didn't He ha- doesn't usually tell you why, but he told me that when he was 21, he had 18-pound pressure more on his left arm, so now he's got to put weights on to get it up to that. So he's got 18 pounds on that left arm. And he has, he has something else on his left hand, on his thumb. He has some sort of a, a piece of material that doesn't, it doesn't get wet. He says, I use this because it never gets wet and my Q-tip glides through it, so, you know, easily all the time. I don't have that problem. Well, well anyways. He just doesn't... missed, so <laughs> Holman doesn't mind that because Holman needs to win this to have any chance to get in the finals. Holman actually started to pull when he was at the age of 12 years old. When he went to the army in Germany, they had a unit that they called Sport Support. So therefore, when he was at home and serving time in the army, he played pool at home. And he was in the army because it was a sport support kind of a plan. He did that for five years. He was in the German army for five years. He re-upped five times. He, he, he went for 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, 12 months, and another 12 months. And he won one of the big Kevin Trudeau's tournaments, and he got 350000 And he built a home in Jacksonville, Florida with that money. I believe he's leasing that home now, Denny. He spends very little time in Jacksonville. I'm, I, I talked to him about that as well. And he says, yeah, I, I don't even spend time in Jacksonville. He says, I lease it. So, well, uh, I don't think he should have built a home with the money. He should have went to the racetrack. That's what I would have did. Waste money on a house. <laughs> and then your famous line... Sleep in the street. <laughs> Rack number two, home and leads, one nothing. Nine ball, maybe, yes. Position on the one, no. Well, I, I can. Yeah, we're going to see a safe. Yeah, I can see right away the safety he'll probably play off the one behind the three, four down this end of the table. Looks like the angle that he's left himself on the one suggests that the cue ball will come down table behind the three, four. He would like to get the, the one ball, if at all possible, behind the seven. Well, I think here you concentrate on the cue ball. There's enough balls in the way if you get the cue ball down this corner. Well, I guess he doesn't want to do that because the scratch is possible. That's why he went that way, but he didn't snook him very well. Now, I was surprised to see him not go the direction. I liked your way, but the corner pocket was a danger. Cut this into the seven and, and go two rails, maybe behind the two. You better watch the cue ball. Oh, he made it. Mr. Holman <clears throat> takes the cue ball in hand. <coughs> I 
Let's take a look at the way the balls are laying over the table. The, the three and the four are next to one another. It's marginal whether or not the three will pass because the four is in front of it. I do believe there's room for it to pass. Yeah, it has plenty of room, Billy. But you're going to have to be pretty accurate with your uh, cue ball placement. Goes in the side also. And where the four is, you won't have much to do. Well, uh, I think this could have been better. Well, he's got to shoot the two. He's got the two still on the table, Danny. Yeah. Well, he's all right then with that. He's looking at the side. He would have to go between the six and ten there. But well, it's it's doable. Well, he's got his choice now. He's got the corner. I kinda, he's all right. I kind of like the corner here. Yeah, definitely. Stay you stay away from the four by shooting the three in the corner. If you opt to go with the three in the side, you, know, you might run past the four, or bump the four. Yeah, he's not even thinking of that, Billy. Yeah, better control hitting the three full. The four is not far away. Well, he got a little tricky here. He's going to have to draw the ball. This is a very real quick stroke. He'll, put, he'll just draw it about th two feet. Good shot. And he left an angle. Well, you got to get on the six good to get to the seven. Where do you think he'll do? Where he's, will he put? He's going to play it in the side. Yeah, he got the perfect angle to go to the seven. Yeah, he wants to make sure he stays under the six. So he can cut it to the left, like he's done. Got good. So Strickland, off of his two mistakes, is going to find himself behind two to nothing. Well, Earl is trying because it's a thousand dollars for winning a game. But Holman, it means more to Holman could still win the tournament. Mr. Holman now leads the match two games to nothing. Holman's been spending some time some time in, uh, in Thailand. He met a beautiful woman in Thailand, I should say a, a young woman, <laughs> very attractive. He showed me her picture. I think that's the only thing can hurt his game. <laughs> young, beautiful women. <laughs> that never hurts your game, has it? Excuse me? I, I want to forget that, you know. <laughs> I got married far too many times. And I never asked anyone to marry me. Oh, he made something. He made the two ball. Excuse me, he made the three ball. Two balls positioned to the left of the foot spot. Yeah, he's trying to figure out now how to get to the two. It looks like only one way. You got to draw the ball a little bit. I think he can go into the end rail and bounce right towards the two. Well, you think he may have to do a little bit more than that. This is a pretty difficult shot here. He wants to get, he's, he's, he's going forward here. He's going to go around the nine. Now that'll send him in, in good line or straight up for, on the two. That'll put him in good line on the four. Yeah, he's still got work to do. You know, just making the two is not good enough.
This is the big shot in this rack coming up now. Like Danny said, he had a little work to do. He did it. And he did it. Pocketing the two, which was a somewhat difficult shot. Repositioning the cue ball near a cushion with a nice, a nice angle on the four. Five balls positioned near the side pocket. He wants to make sure he, he comes up table far enough so he'll be able to cut the five. Well, he's playing the five in the corner now. This will do just, just fine. Yeah, he's going to be fine here. Just don't miss the five. You know, a little angle on the six. You go to the seven automatically. Playing for the seven isn't automatic. It's a little, a little tricky because of the position of the ten. He can't afford to come down table too far and find himself in back of the ten. With that understanding, he's going to make sure he stays far enough away from the ten for that not to happen, but yet close enough to the 10 to simplify the shot. So therefore, pretty, pretty tricky situation here. He couldn't make a mistake here, so he's been pretty careful right now. Yeah, he did that, Billy. He's okay. Well, he, he's fallen further away from the 10 than he would have liked to, but he's fallen where he needed to. He may go around the eight here. Nope. And uh, that's one of the reasons I, I, I mentioned that he may go around the eight because the speed of that shot was kind of funny. Yeah, he if got he, on the 50-yard line. If you go around the eight, now you have multiple pockets to play position for. Notice that the cue ball kept going, then he would have had multiple pockets after it hit that bottom rail. Yeah, he got tricky here. Now, he can cut it in either the side or the corner. Either shot has its problems. Yeah, when you get to the seven, you got to have a better shot than this to complete the rack. Nicely cut. Yeah, good shot. No problem getting to the nine, just make the eight like he did. He's got to stay focused here. He's got to hit the shot cleanly because he really wants to swing two cushions out of the upper left corner. At least that's the angle that I see. Yeah. Pretty good. Better than pretty good. That's the way that shot's supposed to be played. Rack number three goes to Holman. As the first two have, now he leads, his, he leads in a match three games to nothing. Going back to that shot on the seven ball when he fell short of the mark, playing position for the eight. My recommendation was to go around the eight. But of course, when you shoot a shot with more speed, you lose a little bit of accuracy. Sometimes it's a fair trade-off. Sometimes it's not. It all depends on how you feel when you're at the table. He felt that he had a better chance of pocketing the seven with the speed that he hit it with. He probably was right. But he had a better chance of coming up with a better shot on the eight with a harder speed. He opted to go with the softer speed. Really didn't get where he wanted to go, but he did run out. He's a great shot maker. The eight wound up no problem at all. He struck that break very nicely. Made the nine on the side. He has a Semi-tough shot on the one. He can either bank across side. He could possibly cut it inside. That's a very difficult shot. 
I think he's supposed to play safe here. He called the bank on the side, but or cut on the side. I, he's looking at the cut in the corner. Tough speed. Yes, yeah, that is tough speed. Now he's, he's he must hit this shot on the thin side. He cannot. That's so well, he played safe then. He played safe. He played safe all the way there. I recommended it, and he got behind the balls. Very good shot. Excellent shot. I don't know about this. I would kick the other way. That's a good hit. He did brush it, and he didn't move it. He put it right back where it was. When Strickland set up to kick at the one ball, I noticed his line of aim, and I said to myself, it looks like he may go around the one here, and if he doesn't go around the one, he's just going to brush the one. That's exactly what happened. He just brushed the one. Um, I'm thinking that that's what he played, actually. He played to brush the one like that. He hit the paint, Billy. It didn't even move two inches. He's going to hit on the other side of the side and draw the cue ball. And it'll bend into the one here, like that. And the reason he went with a low ball is because after contact, providing that he hits the one ball solidly, he'll control the cue ball down that end of the table. He, he, did, so it, he did everything he intended to do, but he couldn't control the one ball. He was fortunate not to have brushed the three there. And risky. I thought he could just go forward two rails, but he didn't. I just want to win a game. I just don't want to get skunked. He should go three cushions for the, for the three in the side here. Yeah. Or three cushions for the uh, three in the other side. Good shot. He's got the right angle on the four to get to the five. That's a very good point there. He played that shot perfectly. Ending up with a very, very nice angle on the four to very naturally go cross table for position for the five, which is right on the foot spot. I watched Earl play his match yesterday, not from the booth, but from the stands. And... Uh, I'd have to say that he played about as well as I've seen him play in quite some time. Well, if, he got the angle now to play the six and the seven in the same pocket. I believe he'll go three rails to the seven in the same pocket. If no, he's not. He's going to go one rail. Look at this. Either way, but he preferred that way. If this, if, this, if this tournament would have started today, Earl would have definitely been one of the players that would have figured. You're right. Based off of how he's playing. Yeah, he's ready to play, and I know he's thinking that. Why didn't it start now? Something bothered him, but I'll tell you what, he's a little too sensitive to the crowd. We need the crowd. You can't be that sensitive. You know, look what they do in basketball. They wave balloons in front of the guy when he's shooting important foul shot. Game number four goes to the overly sensitive Earl Strickland. <laughs> and now he trails in the match by only two games. Three games to one. Sit still for 30 minutes. Not even blink. There's Cosmo, hard worker. He loves it. He's always smiling. The audience needs to be in good shape, too. 
sit still. Everybody can sit still in this game, where they, where they don't want to. Oh, yes. Why us? So I asked him, I said, Earl, what is it with this stupid when you're breaking the balls, you get down so low, uh, what, 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 why are you doing this? He says, because I break them better this way. I said, but you're, <laughs> but are you losing power? He said, you don't need power breaking on, on this table. I says, okay. I said, you know, but Van Boning, uh, he breaks for power. Did no. you ask him why... You know, if he, if he doesn't give him more power, why does he do it? He says because you don't need power. Oh, he's he's getting bothered by the audience. You can't... Earl, play the game. Forget all that. Made the 10. Rack number five goes Earl's way as rack number four did. Now, after five racks, Earl's only within one game of the lead. Two games for Strickland, three for Holman. But of course, I, uh, I I ask Earl quite a few other questions as well, and he's and, and I asked him questions in in regard to the table, the equipment. You didn't ask him for a date, did you? <laughs> he said the table's not tough enough. He says we need tougher tables. We need smaller pockets. Matter of fact, he says, we shouldn't even play in on a table that has side pockets. He says, if we, if we played on a table that only had four pockets, nobody could beat me. No one. I told him I'll go one better. We play with no pockets and play tree cushion. <laughs> I did figure out one thing. I got to break them harder. He's mumbling something. I wish we could hear it. Got to play safe here. He's going to go around where the 10 is with the cue ball. Yeah, he's got a bunch of balls to get him with. And he got him on the 10. And the 7. And the, he got him pretty well. Like I said, this match means more to Holman than it does to Earl. Both of these players keep themselves in very, very good health and shape. Yeah, Earl does road work. He runs like five miles a day. Yesterday, he came into the tournament area. He said, ran eight miles today. I said, <laughs> eight miles. Oh, Excellent. Didn't hit the ball. This kick is much more difficult than the last one, even considering the position of the tube, positioned so close to the corner pocket. Well, do you masse it to make it, or you just try to hit it? Because if you make it masseing it, I don't think you're going to fall on the three. Three does not get by the four, I don't believe, to the side. And that's the path that's going if he masses it and makes it. I like just kicking it. I like kicking it, too. The masse, very difficult, so I like kicking it. No reward. Much perfect, better shot. Perfect, perfect. Much better shot. And he kicked it perfectly. That was a pretty good pool shot there, Mr. Holman.
I wouldn't kick this with speed. I would kick this with the, sp hard, the speed hard enough to get the tube back up the other side. He hit the two thin, yeah, too thinly. Yeah, he sold out here. He didn't get deeply enough under the two for that shot to play out well for him. Look at the road map now, Billy. Two, three, four, and the six, seven road map. or connect the dots, whatever you prefer. Holman does not have control of his destiny, but he, what he does have is he has has the ability, if he wins this match, to make Shaw and Van Boning perform. Yeah, if he wins this match, one of those two loses without making many games, he gets in the finals. So if Holman wins this match, Shaw and Van Boning must both win to keep Holman out of the finals. Hopefully that cleared up a little bit for people. Yeah, it'll be an exciting finals no matter what happens. We're not used to round robin. We're used to the two losses and out stuff. This is more fair. The better player has a better chance to win. After game number six, Score is now four to two in favor home and four, Strickland two. Does anyone have the schedule for the next round? Okay, now the next round is going to be Appleton Van Boning. Appleton, is, as you all know, has, has dropped several rungs in the ladder in, his, in terms of his quality of play. He really needs to come back against Van yeah, Boning. He hasn't won a match yet. But a win against Van Boning will uh, <laughs> make it a lot easier for Appleton to walk proudly out of this arena. I'll tell you that. But if he comes back and he plays it like he's been playing the last several matches, he's not going to be feeling good about himself or his game. But he'll be coming up in his next round against Shane Van Boning. And that's the, that's the guy that you really don't want to come up and play right now. Because uh, he's really a monster. He breaks the ball well, so, Holman so right well. right now is thinking of how to get positioned to cut the three in. But if he can get all the way down, the three goes in the side off the four. Much easier shot. But uh, even even with uh, that understanding, how's he going to get down there? You got to make the one. I think you'll go past the five and seven. He's playing the ten ball. Did he call the ten ball? Yeah, he called the ten. Oh, he's going to have to jack up to do that. I don't think the natural angle's there. It is. <laughs> That's why I'm up here with you, Billy. I was wrong yesterday three times, and Pat said, it's early yet. I like that one. He was right. I mean, the day just started, and I'm already wrong once. 
I thought he had to jack up to glance more, but I guess he saw the angle fine because it went right in. I, uh, I'm going to come clean. Come so, clean, Billy. So did I. <laughs> What? So did I. I, I, I thought. I thought the same, as oh. you as you did. That's I'm coming clean. Okay. That's and I did that. I did that because I really feel badly for you right now. You mean in your old age you're getting honest? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I want to see that again because that ball looked like it was going to drive a little bit more forward than glance. But let's see. We're going to see it again. It's going We're to end all up. learning how to make that second ball in the side. Here we go, folks. Look at this. It looked too straight in. Look at that. Perfect. And you felt sorry for me, Billy? I should have let you call it. So I could laugh at you. Well, I, I I didn't process it quickly enough to make that call because I I was informed too late that he was playing the ten. So when I was informed that he was playing the ten, you had already processed yeah. it and made your mistake. Made the mistake either. first. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but you want to take half of the blame just because you were thinking it? Excellent shot. Great shot. But what's he going to do with the four? See, the four and the eight are frozen together. I don't believe the four goes into the side. Yeah, but how about the eight in the corner? The eight looks like it might be straight in, He's looking especially at it. from here. He's looking at it now. Yeah, it's straight in, but how's he going to get there from the three? Mm, yes. Yeah, especially since he's positioned awkwardly on the two. How's he going to get a nice angle on the three to drop for the four-eight combination? If in fact that's what he uh, plans on doing. Oh. Well, I don't think he's looked at the combination. He's looking at the four in the upper right-hand corner. And when you consider how he positioned the cue ball in relation to the three, that's the angle he's left himself. Uh, the angle to drop to that side rail for shape on the four at the other corner. Nice. And look at that cue ball. Perfectly positioned. Yep. Good shot. Little tricky layout here with that cluster of the seven and eight. And it's not over yet. See, he's awkward on the five here. He don't like where he's ended up on the five. I know he, he can't like this. Well, from now on, I'm going to think slower, Billy, and let you make the first mistake. He's going to have to follow the ball with right-hand English, sending it two cushions toward the seven. That's his only option from here. I think with no English would be better. See it? No English, Billy. No English. That yeah. got him closer to the seven and in line. On the right line. That was the key. Stay on the right line. He drew back because he couldn't afford to stop. He would have been too close to the eight and perhaps with the wrong angle. Yeah, he's good here. Parking the eight pre presents no problem. He realized it and he drew it back. And now he's shooting the ten for a six win in game number eight. Look at that. Earl Strickland shooting 850. Holman is shooting 1,000. That's why he's winning six to two. Yeah, come to think of it, I don't remember Holman making a mistake in this match. He hasn't. He's shooting a thousand. Right. Tough to maintain, though, for 13 games. But right now, it got him ahead four games. Yeah, I don't think he feels like missing or making mistakes. Well, he certainly doesn't up until now. So far.
He must really feel comfortable. I, I glanced over to his chair. I, I, when I did that, he happened to notice that I was glancing over. He looked at me and smiled, but he was in the chair watching Strickland run out. And I was saying to myself, why is he smiling? Strickland, Strickland's running out. I can see now why he's smiling, because he knows he's playing his best game. And he can feel it. Oh, he missed the side that time. But he didn't give up anything. He didn't make a ball, but he didn't give up anything. So Earl now, losing about four games, has only a safe to play. He would like to position the cue ball behind the three. Yeah, that's where it's going, but you got to be careful you don't bank the one. Well, you should bank the one toward the eight. Yeah. See, don't make the one. He snookered him. But he didn't snooker him as good as he wanted to. Yeah, I think uh, Homan could masse it a hair and maybe cut the one in. The key to that shot was positioning the cue ball behind the three. He overcut the one slightly, which, which actually created more movement with the cue ball in an escape that area of the table that was behind the three. Now he has a couple different ways to hit the one. Kubo should end up near the upper right-hand corner here. No, he got deeply enough. And he, he made the one. the one. Yeah, you don't have to call it if you're kicking. Now, with that TPA of 1,000, had he not made the one, he would have been suffered something where. Yeah, but he since would've. he made the one, he's maintained that 1,000 TPA. And he's got position on the two. Now he's got great position on the three to get to the uh, four. Look where the five is. I mean, it's a little steep angle, but he doesn't have anything to do with it to get to the six. If he's, so if he's, he's able fine. to, if he's able to run out this rack, he'll then have seven games and be kind of like halfway home. Shooting he's still a, at a thousand. Shooting a thousand. Yeah, he got perfect here. Yeah, this is very nice. Every ball connects with the next. Stop, stop, stop. Well, he's got to do something to go from the 8 to the 9, but that's no problem. Boy, he's hitting them cleanly, Billy. If he goes on and shoots a thousand, and Shaw uh, and either Shaw or Van Boning happen to lose their match, this is a new force right here to be reckoned with. He's going to have the momentum, the confidence. Well, in sixty and years, going. I've only seen one one thousand, and that was Wade Crane against Buddy Hall in the finals in last call for nine ball in Atlantic City. I remember it well, very, very well. So does Buddy Hall. That, that, was, <laughs> rag, that was rag number nine. Now, now Holman has a 7-2 advantage, and he still has the 1,000 rating on the TPA. Now let's see that kick shot where he made a ball. Now he got deeply behind the one to control the cue ball down this end of the table. And the one glanced off two balls. Yeah. You know. You don't have to call it this is gonna, kicking. This is going to be off topic a little bit, but I'm going to mention it anyways. And I hope I don't hurt anyone's feelings. Now, Strickland hooked Homan. If Homan would have kicked successfully and gave up a shot, why should that affect his TPA? Because Pat wrote it up that way. No error. In know. other words, if you kick, as long as you hit the ball, regardless of what shot you give up, it doesn't affect your TPA. I stand corrected. It doesn't affect the TPA. All right, let's go on. 
Well, it's kind of like bothering me, you know? I mean, uh, some things just bother me, and I have to figure, figure out why, and, you know? Oh, that ball's not reaching. Holman's starting off real good here. The one to the two, somewhat of a problem. The two to the three, a bigger problem, and then the three to the four, perhaps even a bigger problem than the two to the three. Well, I so, don't think you have to play position off the one. Just cinch it and make the two in the far corner. If you try to go around, you're liable to hit the nine, you're liable to get out of line, but getting to the two is pretty easy here. Then he's got to worry about getting to the three. You know, I That's agree. what he's looking at. I agree with you. If he likes the angle, he's going to leave himself on the two to get to the three. If not, he'll have to try something a little more exotic. You agree with me? Yes. Then I must be wrong. Now, that's a pretty good angle. He'll go cross table and end up with an angle on the three to cut it to his right, sending the cue ball cross table again around the ten, playing shape for the four in the lower left-hand corner. So this is his pattern. Let's see how well he does with it. You know, Buddy Hall says, don't play position when you already got it, but I thought it was his invention, but then I heard that Eddie Taylor told him that many years ago. You yes. certainly remember Eddie Taylor. Yes. Maybe the greatest banker ever, and he played everything. See, when he played position on the two there, uh, Danny, as you well know, he was actually playing position on the four. What I mean, he played three balls ahead. Playing position on the two with the correct angle puts him on the correct angle on the three to drop for the four. Well, he's got a tough way to go here. Yeah, he, uh, he inadvertently ran into the four. Now he's got to go straight cross table underneath the five and pocket the three. He missed. There goes his thousand. He would have been there if he made it, but now Earl has a chance to win some games, and he's mumbling. I think he can cut the three in. Great shot. You know, I agree with you. If the tournament was starting now, Earl would be one of the favorites. That's a great shot. Where are you going? He's all right. Well, three games is better than two. I still say this is too easy. Yeah, Earl is still in stroke. He's still talking to himself. You need to take the side pocket. No, now he's talking to the fans. You really have to play them. Shooting awful straight, Billy. But I left him straight in here while the three was over here. He would have to Stu, you don't have to keep shaking your head. You don't have to keep shaking your head in agreement. <laughs> what? Way too easy. Yeah. If he doesn't want to shake his head, he's going to have to put weights <laughs> on there. Watch outside. Oh, caught the point. Earl's really playing pretty good. Yeah. He's not biased. He talks to both sides of the crowd. No, he'll talk to anyone that wants to listen to him. After game number 10, Strickland 3, Holman 7. In game number 10, we saw Holman make his first mistake. So therefore, those uh, aspirations or thoughts about shooting a perfect 1,000 went out the window. But what's important to Holman is to win the match. Yeah. Players are too good now. You gotta make it tougher. 
don't don't make the don't make the pockets smaller. Just take pockets away. <laughs> there you go. You have any idea what he's saying, Billy? Yes, he's saying that there shouldn't be side pockets on the table. He <laughs> said you don't really need to make the corner pockets smaller. Just eliminate the sides. Why don't you just play one pocket, then you eliminate five pockets. Well, the Q and Cushion in Miami had a five by 10 with two corner pockets only, just for playing one pocket. Play the one ball. One ball, four pocket. Difficult shot. The position of the two ball suggests to me that he's going to have to do something special with the cue ball. And in doing that, it's going to even... Yeah, he missed. Tough shot. Yeah, make he's the trying shot to pull where he difficult. can make the two. I don't think Homan could make this ball. He can hit it, but I don't think he can make it. I think he's got to cut it, bank it to the middle of the end rail, and play safe. He's got to kick it and can't hit it. He can't hit it? No. I thought he could hit it. He's got to kick it up table okay. with good speed. That's a good shot anyway. Yeah. Well, he didn't snook him, but he didn't leave him any kind of shootable shot, although Earl will try to shoot it, but look at how do you get position? Yeah, he's opting to go for the pocket here. I don't blame him. He always practices shots like this oh, one. Oh, he'll get position if he makes it, but it's tough. Wow. He, he practices shots like that. And if they ever do come up in a game, he feels comfortable because he's familiar with the shot. Look at him. <laughs> no. <that's, laughs> for some players, that wasn't going to be their shot of choice in that situation. No. But for Earl, it was. He loved it. Oh, he can shoot. The guy can shoot. He's looking to see if the five passes the eight, but he can draw the ball and play it in the corner. Well, he didn't do that. He still can play it in the corner. But I don't know what he's got. Is he going to billiard the ten? Well, he's got the four. I know, but is he going to billiard the 10 from here? Oh, the four goes by. I didn't think it did. But he did, and he made it. He's got to force this to the, to the side rail, I believe. And then cross table, ending up in, uh, by around center table for the seven. I don't think he has to force it at all. I think he just has to make it. And he's bouncing to the seven. You see, there's no force there. Well, I think with a follow, you end up going too far away from the seven. So I think he should have forced it anyways and would have ended up closer to the seven. Keep, keep hitting higher on that side rail. No problem for Earl. He had to draw past the side. He got boated in by the sponsors, and I think they were right. He said, I'm back. That's what he said. I'm back. He said it again? Because he told me yesterday he was back, and then he shot 975. To prove it. Well, four is better than none. I'm going to have to throw Pat Fleming under the bus, Pat. I can't help it, but I'm going to have to throw you under the bus here. 
Two days ago, after Earl lost his first two matches, Pat came to me and says, oh. he said, I don't think Earl's going to win a match. <laughs> and I said, no, Pat, I think he's playing pretty good. He just hasn't had the opportunities. I says, you know, now Shaw barraged him, Van Boning barraged him from their breaks. He really didn't have that many opportunities. I said, what I did see when he was playing, that he's prepared to play. He's playing pretty good. He certainly is. Highest TPA in the tournament so far. And with his new break stance, how can you stop him? Well, the break got fickle that time. I always wonder about the break. How could you make the ten two times in a in a match, and then have other times it doesn't even move? Holman still playing very well. Hit the yeah, center I mean, of the pocket. Nine sixty-eight. There's a lot to be said about a player that can sit in a chair and watch his opponent, you know, run out two, three racks, and get out of the chair, shoot a tough shot, and hit the center of the pocket. Really, there's a lot to be said about That's that. It's called preparation. He came here ready to play. That's exactly right. You're ready to play, and you're totally prepared. And you have a strong concentration, and it's only you and the balls on the table. And great physical condition. Yes, sir. Looks like he's in the zone. He doesn't see anyone around the table. Nothing seems to bother him right now. He looks in physical condition to fight Mayweather. But anyway, and that's not such a joke because years ago, they were talking about Will Chamberlain fighting Muhammad Ali. And you know what Will Chamberlain's mother said? You know, Chamberlain was seven. I don't have any uh, clue. <laughs> well, she said that kids don't look up to their parents anymore. <laughs> of course, Chamberlain was seven foot two. If you look at Holman when he's walking around the table, you'll notice that he doesn't take his eyes off the balls. Well, he got a little funny here. He's going to have to hit two rails and avoid the side pockets. He'll cut this in with a half a tip of left English, which will keep him on that side of both side pockets. He'll hit it with two and a half rail speed here. That's when you know a player is in stroke and in tune with the game. As he walks around the table, he'll be looking at the balls, looking at the angle, not up in the air or away from the table. Looking at the balls, looking at the angles, because he's playing the game and he's feeling it as he's walking around the table. Rack number 12 goes to home and, and once again leads by four games in the match. Eight games to four and a race to 13. There it is, all the statistics you need. Earl's talking to Cosmo now. 
I noticed that on on the TPA, he only missed one ball, but yet he dropped 28 points from no, a thousand. No, he's got two errors though. From where? What was the second error? He's got two errors. A position error. Yeah, he had a position error. Well, had, had he make made the one, then he would have still been shooting. So how 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 do you determine that it was a position error? Made the ten on the break. I think that's too discretionary. I don't think that should be two errors. That's that shouldn't be two errors. I think you got to, I think you got to modify that or. I don't think it should be up to you or anyone else to determine that he fell fell out of position. I think it should only be one error. And I'm usually right, ask Danny. I'm not right, going to agree with you. What are right, you, Danny? You think I'm nuts? Pat pays us. <laughs> I'm not, yeah. Okay. All right, come on. We'll go on. Well, folks, we're talking to Pat in the background. He said when he talks to Billy later... Billy will understand it better. I don't see why he would say that. I've talked with Pat a lot of times and couldn't understand. <laughs> he doesn't know what a testa uda you are. That means hard head in uh, Italian. <laughs> he didn't make a ball, but for some reason I don't think he minds much. One ball position on the end rail. Cue ball way up table close to the side rail. Where do you push now, Billy, to get the best of this? I'll play the one. He may have, well, he's not pushing. He's playing the one. Oh, he's going to try to cut this in, spin it in. Yeah. No, he's playing for the crowd now. I don't that, believe that. That, that doesn't that. count. That, that wasn't the, the correct shot. If he would have made it great, that wasn't the correct shot because of the position of the two. Let's see the 10 end of break while Earl is moaning. Now, since he pocketed another ball, correct me if I'm wrong here. He pocketed another ball other than the ball he called. Does his, does his opponent have the option to go to the table? Or, or pass the shot back to, to Strickland? Yes. Okay, thank you. You make it harder and the guy beats me, then I'll worry about it. Tough to get to the two here. Two doesn't get by the uh, nine, I don't think. Maybe it does. Now, what happened there? He, he missed the ball he called, but yet he continued to shoot. There's something wrong here. In other words, are you uh, interpreting the shot on a one as a kick shot? Is okay. that what you're doing? No, he cut the one in. He missed it. I'm confused. Billy, you're argumentative today. Like always. I'm confused, okay? And if, that you, too. if you understood my argument, I want you to give me the answer then. Pat keeps telling him we'll clear it up later, so I wish Billy would just keep quiet now and straighten it out later. You'll be smarter later, Billy. Danny, I'm going to tell you something. For years, I wanted to say this to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if you do that, you could cancel all your appointments for a while. <laughs> Meanwhile, Earl keeps plugging around while you're rattling around. Oh, it trickled, and he went a little too far, but he's got a cut. Yeah, he's pointing where he's trying to show people he could have done better. Game 14 goes to Strickland, who now has five games to Holman's nine. Now, now, while we have a moment, can someone explain to me how a man can call a shot, miss the ball he called, 
locked in another ball and was able to stay in control of the table. I want to know that answer. Billy, we're going to look at it all again. That might explain it. Let's show the replay so we could keep Billy quiet. You make it difficult, you'll really see how good I am. All they're doing is breaking better than me. They're not outplaying me. They're just breaking better. They're not out. They can't outplay me. It's impossible. And if you're going to say that he cut the one in and hit rail before the one and use that as the reason that he's allowed to keep shooting. I'm going to stay out of that. That's pretty tough because that's, uh, you know, that's so close to make that determination to begin with. Made the ball on the side. He's going to have position on the one. Does he have enough angle to go to the two? I'll play the one in the corner. He's pretty straight in the side with no angle. He might have to shoot it in the corner and miss it in the corner. I know he didn't bank it. Yep. Yeah, that was one of the rare balls he hit bad. bad <laughs> yeah, hit. yeah, I was surprised how poorly he hit that shot. I thought that he was going to hit it a lot better than that. As a matter of fact, I thought he was going to make it. But In other words... I was just informed that as long as you go rail first, whether the, the the ball you're shooting is on the same rail or not, as long as you go rail first, you don't have to call it. You don't but, have but, to be but, snookered but either. Let me finish, please. Let me finish. But that's a discretion call. Okay, it's a discretion call. Well, that's right. I said that's a discretion call. Okay? Meaning that it isn't clear clear that he did hit real first. He could have hit... I understand what the referee said, but he used his discretion to make that call. That's why we got a referee. His decision is final. That's not considered a kick, if you ask me. And I'm... And if I, and you I hit do, the rail and first? I, and I, but it was, it was meant for kicks. That's circumventing the uh, the rule. Okay, we'll go on. What? I like that. I like that. As long as you hit rail first, you don't have to call the ball. When the object ball is frozen, it's very difficult. To make that determination that well, you're that hitting real argue with Cosmo later. Meanwhile, Holman doesn't care about all of that. He's trying to win. And I'm, you know what? What he's doing out there is making me happy, okay? I want to see him run out rack after rack. Not that I don't want to see Strickland win. I just want to see him get a fair shake. That's all. If it makes okay? you happy, Billy, I'm happy. Don't, don't try to apologize to me, I'm Danny. not. I'm just trying to shut you up. <laughs> You've never been able to do that, okay? In 60 years of where we know one another, you should never have been able to shut me up. <laughs> Because I love you, buddy, and I wouldn't hit you. <laughs> I wanted to a few times. <laughs> but you're the, ugly the enough without getting mutual. hit.
that's why you're growing a beard because you said I'm coming to the tournament I'm going to get in an argument with Danny and that'll soften the blow how long did it take you to think about that one Oh, uh, I mean, really? <laughs> that's a rule in boxing. You can't have more than a three-day growth because it will soften the blow. Back to one ball. Corner five. Oh, he didn't make that. Is it going to keep going? Yes, it is. So Holman's got a shot. Not an easy one, but I think the cue ball is going to go into position if he doesn't snooker himself. He's not going to place a hook He's right here. He's playing safe. Yeah. He's playing safe. Yeah. I think Str uh, Strickland's table management uh, needs a little work. Good hit, but I don't think he's going to like it. There you go, John. But did he tie up the two? Uh, I believe the two passes the five. Well, then he didn't tie it up. But can you get to the two from here? Yeah, yeah. There's one rail in between the five nine. He's over the top. So. One rail in between the five nine and maintain the angle to cut the two to your left. And then go cross table to try to end up with some sort of an angle on the three. That's positioned underneath See, uh, the four. See how he's shooting? He's over the top. But I imagine he's been there before. And he got there. I just wanted to describe to the public how difficult that was. No, instead I, of a Mickey Mouse easy shot. I think he should go over where the side pocket is. Take a look at the three from that angle. Right, walk over there by the side. He hasn't even done that. I think he can draw it off the rail, under the eight, and go to the three. That's the way it looks to me. But did he get there? That's why I think yes, he should have. I no, he didn't. That's why I think he should have went over by the side pocket and took a look at the three from that angle. I can visually see that the side pocket. On the other side of the side, he had an open channel right to the three. He didn't. He didn't even know it. He didn't even go over there and look at it. He called the bank on the three. He's not kicking. He's going to shoot right at it. Yeah, this is a good one pocket shot. And he made it. He wants to make. Uh, he needs a kiss here. He got it. He got it. He deserved it. That was a good shot. People clap. They love to see bank shots. Now he's really got to put extreme right English and go around the seven. Yeah, that's the safest way. He can't go one rail because he's figures to hit the seven or the six. You're right. He's got to go forward. But then he's got to avoid hitting anything. Well, he won't hit anything. Well, he needs extreme right-hand English. He did it. Good shot. And now he has to get away from that side of the table. And the angle that he's left himself with seems a little flat. No, he's got a pretty good angle, a little speed. He'll he'll get to the middle of the table here, Billy. Mm. Looks like to me it's pretty flat, but it, maybe uh Yeah, he has more isn't. angle than you think. He got to the side. Wow. Yeah, the angle was a lot different yeah, than then, what I saw. Yeah. Shooting a nine seventy eight. Only missed one ball. He's getting near the finish line. It's Holman's last match in the tournament. He's going to get to three and two. That'll give him a chance.
Uh, I'll tell you what, you really have to like the way he's playing. He's playing great. You know, this has been probably the best played match of the tournament. Yeah, and it's showing 978. Or I should say, this has probably been the best performance by any player in any match in the in tournament. In his losses, he's won 18 games. So if Shaw or Van Boning lose, they better have won 18 games or they're not going to be in the finals. If he goes on to win this match, which obviously it looks like he is, and either Shaw or Van Boning lose, he will be one of the players in the finals. If Shaw loses and Van Boning wins, Shaw is out because he lost, he only won five games against Van Boning. Yeah. Holman will go by him. Seven ball. Well, he doesn't have a shot on the one. Where do you push now, Billy? I like rolling on the eight, tie it up, If Van, and let him go. Here's another situ possible scenario. If Shaw wins and Van Boning loses, if Van, Van Boning can win 10 games with the loss, it will be Shaw and Van Boning in the finals, regardless if he wins or loses here. So... In order for Holman to get to the finals, I'm thinking that Shaw is going gonna, is gonna to have to lose. Because if Shaw wins and Van Boning loses and he scores nine games with the loss or more, I think it's Van Boning in the finals. Because nine games will give... Van Boning, 18 well, he wins. He didn't snooker him. Does he have a shot on the one past the three? It's delicate, but he's looking. Now, Van, Van Boning has nine wins in his loss. His sole loss. Oh, it's the only loss. If he loses his next round... And he gets nine games, he'll have 18 games, right? That means both Holman and Billy. Van Boning. I'm trying to figure this out, please. Yeah, we'll figure it out after the win or lose. Then then we really know. <laughs> okay, I won't say anything. Yeah, I mean, let's wait till they win or lose, mm -hmm. then we'll figure it out. I'm sick of talking about it. Well, I'm talking about it. I know, I'm sick <laughs> of hearing it. <laughs> Yeah, let's wait till it ends. Then we'll really be able to know. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll do whatever you like, Danny. <laughs> okay, that's what I like. Okay. <laughs> I mean, you're very smart with figures, but let's figure it out later. Look at this shot. Oh, beautiful hit. Oh, what a hit. It's not going to help him, though. He sold out. But I'll tell you what, Earl played a pretty good tournament. He didn't lose this yet, but he played a good tournament regardless. You know, he don't have to be embarrassed. He overcut it. Can he hit the one? I think he could. I don't think he's got a pocket for it, but he can hit it. 
He called the bank. The bank's passed the... Yeah, I guess it does. Pretty good. Good shot. Yeah, Earl played pretty well so far. He didn't lose yet, but he's far behind. Holman only needs two games. Oh, he missed. I, I got him. I got him. I'm talking about how good he's been playing, so now he missed the six. Well, do you draw the ball here, Billy, and play the 8-9 in the same pocket, or do you go forward and play it in the far corner? I, w I would probably do what he's going to do. <laughs> yeah. Draw it. <laughs> Good decision, Billy. Thank you. He's getting on the hill. Now he's on the hill, 12 games to five. Leads the match 12 games to five. He's on the hill. Race to 13. And he shot respectable here, 852. That's pretty good. I have a question for Pat Fleming. Pat, you... Uh, no, I want I want the answer now. A lot of people are interested in this, okay? How do you know that? Because I know what people are interested in, okay? If Van Boning loses his match and wins nine games, he'll have the exact number of wins in the tournament than Holman. What's the next tiebreaker? In other words, the next tiebreaker will then be who won the head-to-head -head match. That's what? what I wanted to know. It's like football. That's all. The same okay. thing they do with football. Who won when they played? Yeah, well, now, now we know what the next tiebreaker is. I'm not saying I don't understand. I'm saying now we know. Well, he made a ball on the break. He's got a fall on the two. That's going to be tough where the cue ball is. Yeah, this is a tough position. Unless he shoots it up the corner. I don't even know if he could make it up the corner. Might be best not even shooting this. That would be my option, either th thinly cut the one and go behind the nine, possibly. Mm -hmm. Or if I'm going to shoot it, you have to elevate and try to play field goal position or, or draw it all the way back. It's one or the other. Yeah, he jacked up. This makes it tough. Well, that was a great shot. Oh, beautiful. He came back that was just a great enough shot. to go between them. That was maybe one of the best shots so far. Another uh, indication of how strong he's playing in this match and how well prepared he is going into the match. Well, I think he, he has to uh, go one rail and play it in the same pocket as the Four. 
you know, let's see that shot where he had, yeah, this is a great shot. He came just back far enough between the ball. That's a delicate touch. That's like a surgeon. No, it's excellent speed. Yeah, it looks like he's going to win this final match of his. It might not be his final match. He might be playing tonight in the finals. Yeah, he certainly has put on a clinic here in his final match. Now he has to hope that Shaw loses or Van Boning loses and doesn't get more than eight games with the loss. Well, as of right now, I think Shaw has the best chance of losing. And Van Boning's playing like God, and he's playing a guy 0-4. I can't argue with you there. Look at that, 9.72. Wow. Tough to beat. <laughs> Yeah, well, anyway, we got some good matches coming up. But we got Van Boning and uh, Darren. Okay, who's, who's coming up next now? Okay, everyone out there, we have Appleton Van Boning up next. Now, remember, if Van Boning loses that, that match, if he gets nine games, then it goes to the third tiebreaker. But if he gets more than nine games... Okay, that means that he's, he's going to be in the finals. All right, we'll be back. Introducing Lucasi Hybrid, a whole new level of performance and technology. A cue with a revolutionary X-Shox dampening system, eliminating vibration. G5 grip technology for enhanced traction and stability results in maximum cue control. Total sweet spot construction means unmatched power. And the zero flex point ferrule provides dead-on accuracy, giving you the confidence you need in every shot. Lucasi Hybrid, the only cue that matters. 